welcome to Jan's Food Workshop. I'm Chin and this is my mum Chu. Yes, Chu is here today. And what are we doing today, mum? Today we are doing lion head meatballs. Yes, this is a northern Chinese dish. This is our take on it. Just there's a few recipes out there for them. They're all basically the same, but this is our little take on the dish. Uh, we just want to bring it to you because it's tasty, really. We like it. Northern Chinese dish, by the way. Yes. Yeah. So here it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we, had, we had to do a few takes to get that all right. Anyway, here it is. <laughs> right, okay, so we're going to mix the meat together first. So we've got 320 grams of minced pork here. You need high fat, don't you? Yes, to give it a smoother texture, not too coarse. Yeah, and also it keeps it moist. 100 grams of minced chicken thigh. Again, chicken thigh, high in fat. 100 grams of what, Mum? Bacon! And so I chopped the chicken and the bacon up into small chunks and I just put them into a food processor and blended them to a paste. I'm going to add a tablespoon of potato starch, you can use corn flour if you want, a third teaspoon of MSG, a quarter teaspoon of salt. So we've got one and a half tablespoons of light soy, two tablespoons of what, Mum? Salsing rice wine. Yeah, there we go. Crack my in. And we're going to crack an egg. A large egg. Then we're going to add one teaspoon of this 13 spice. We sell it on our web store. Like five spice, but more aromatic and not so strong. Five spice is quite heavy most of the time. I mean, five spice can be literally a blend of five to six main ingredients. Um, they can be used in different amounts. There's actually probably in total 13 different ingredients that could be used in five spice. It depends on what brand uses what spice to make it their five spice. But this 13 spices uses the 13 spices all in one in different quantities. It's, it's much more mellow. And we're just gonna put a teaspoon of that into that. Half a teaspoon of white pepper. So 20 grams of what, Ma? Chive. You can use Chinese chives, they're better. We can get hold of them, so we're just using chives. You can use spring onions if you want, but we prefer chives, they're much more Subtle. Subtle. 20 grams of fresh ginger. Yeah, and that's really finely chopped. And 100 grams of finely chopped water chestnuts. They go in pretty much for texture. And a teaspoon of sugar. You're just gonna mix this up, and you wanna mix this for a long time. Just get all the ingredients mixed up. Yeah. To get the texture you're looking for, you need to pick the meat the mixture, up, mixture yes. up, and then slam it down. Do that about 20 times for every meatball you want to make. But you do it to a whole lot before you make the meatballs. Does that make sense? Repeat for the whole bowl. This is so boring. You can do it like this in large amounts. I don't like doing it like that because a lot of the time you end up with lots of meat flying everywhere. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> it's quicker, but it's just cleaning up is a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, nearly there. You can see the consistent changes. Not consistent, there's texture. Texture, yeah. Got okay, it. so we're there now, and I'm gonna have to go wash my hands, because the next bit is pretty much just making the balls, but there's a little small technique that you use just to stop it from sticking to yourself. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna oil our hands. And this is traditional. This stops that meat mix from sticking to them. So you're gonna make the balls, and then we're gonna put them into potato starch. You can use cornstarch. Um, we're going to coat them lightly on the outside. So you want a fairly decent sized meat ball, sort of like that size. And you just shape them. And then we're going to put these into the potato starch. Is that? Just a light coating. Yeah. And then onto the plate. I'm going to do that for the whole lot. So it's at this point now, if you want to freeze them, you freeze them, but you want to cook them from defrosted, otherwise they're too dense and they will take forever to cook inside. So now we're up to temperature. Temperature, which is 180, and we're just using vegetable oil. We're just going to fry these off for two to three minutes. Careful when they go in. If you're comfortable doing this, you can pan fry them. It's not an issue. Or shallow fry. Mum's a little teeny one there. If you want, you can cook them all the way through, but they'll be a little bit dry. It has to be cooked again. Yeah, yeah. you can't just eat them after two, three minutes. Yeah. There is a second process to this. <laughs> when they're like that and they're crispy on the outside, that's when they're ready. I'm just going to set these aside. When I say they're ready, they're ready for stage two. And the reason why they're called lion meatballs is because apparently they resemble the heads of 
Chinese ancient artifacty irons. Irons? Lions. I'll put a picture of them up now. Next stage. Okay, so we've got a tablespoon of veg oil. I'm going to put some uh, spring onion or scallion. Yeah, spring onions, three spring onions there. Well, there's four small slices of ginger. I'm going to cook that off on a low heat. And we've got some crushed garlic that's going to go in. It's about five cloves. I just want to brown these off. Okay, now it's beginning to colour. And the smell, I think, is Yeah, you'll, you'll change to a very, really nice aromatic smell. Is where we're going to put 15 grams of rock sugar in. And we're just going to cook that off till it dissolves. Yeah, it's the flavour you get when it dissolves. Yeah. So our sugar is dissolved, it will go a brown colour, you can see there's brown patches, that's what the sugar is. Uh, sometimes if you have a smaller base pan, the oil forms a layer on the top and you get a nice syrup at the bottom, but because it's such a large base, it's not going to happen on this occasion. But it's ready to go, so we're going to add 400 ml of water, quarter teaspoon of MSG, tablespoon of light soy, half a tablespoon of dark soy, tablespoon of Chalcine white wine, same of Watma, Oyster sauce. Yeah, oyster sauce. Stir this all in. I'm going to put in a teaspoon of this chicken powder. We sell it on a web store and we sell the 13 spice there as well, chinandchew.com. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place the meatballs into this and we're going to let them cook off and simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes. Bring to the boil and then reduce. You can add sesame oil to this if you want. I don't like the combination of oyster sauce and sesame oil together. I think it's weird with the ginger, sorry. But I mean, it's what you want at the end of the day, isn't it? Yes, by all means, put, the, put it in if you like. Yeah, exactly. We're going to put a lid over. Yeah. See that lion is coming out now. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so now it's getting like this. I'm going to turn it down to a medium heat and let it simmer with the lid. Surprise that fit because I just grabbed that out of the oven. <laughs> we're going to come back about five minutes, turn it over, turn it over two or three times within the 15 to 20 minutes, and then they'll be ready at the end. So this doesn't need any more seasoning whatsoever. We're just going to bring it back to the boil and add in potato starch bit by bit until it's the thickness we're looking for. If you want a glossy look, you can actually add more vegetable oil to this, a couple of tablespoons, and that will give the sauce a glossy look. But that's completely optional. That's the right thickness for me, Mark. Amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take a photo of this because it looks amazing. Mum hates it when I do this. What? Take photos of everything. No, I don't. Yeah. Definitely, yes. Okay, get some of that lovely sauce. Mm. Whack it on the rice. Cool, oh, that meatball. Mm. That 13 spice adds such a depth of flavour. Yeah. Mm. That sauce. Not pungy. That sauce on rice is like crack. I mean, the crunchiness of the chestnut. Mm. You can. You can taste the bacon, but you can definitely taste the, or feel the texture that it gives. Without it, it can be a bit grainy. Mm. with the bacon it just softens it up a lot more and it's just yeah smooth smooth and next level smooth, smooth but there's still textures of it yeah exactly so for, if you want the if you want the written version of this along with the video to go to you're going to have to head over to our in-house patreon kind of thing which is called the recipe vault and it's found on chin and chews um, cookery school.com i'll put the link below um, it's all over there, there's different levels of signing up to it. But yeah, if you'd like to support the channel, by all means head over there as well. Wow. Mm. And though it's a bit big headed of us to say wow to our own food. <laughs> but sometimes food is just, it just gets you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Doesn't it? Like one of the days, this is like a winter warmer. Oh, perfect for winter actually. Mm. It's autumn's drawing in. It's different from your meatball stew. Yeah, a lot different. Mm. That's going to look like this. But the, um... Mm. 
fantastic. You've got to give this a try. Share this recipe, share this video, get it out there. Um, make sure to like it as well. Drop a comment on what you would like to see in the future. That helps us out a lot. Ma, anything else you want to say? I can just say, thumbs up. I'm happy cooking, happy eating. Brilliant, take care guys.